they've done, you've got to commend them. SubhanAllah. That the two things have been made polar opposites. And people are really truly convinced of this narrative. And sometimes we are too. And I don't, I don't actually consider Muslims innocent in this discussion. I think our ignorance has a lot to do with it too. I know many Muslims, when they talk about non-Muslims, they say, I met an American friend today. <laughs> what does that mean? I met an American friend. What they mean by that is a kafir. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously, you know, subhanAllah. That we, in our minds also, these two things have become synonymous. We have to first look deep into ourselves and see how, how big a victim we have become of this propaganda. But the, the discussion of Fir'aun and his chiefs is not done. I want to finish the ayah with you. You know what else they said they might do? Why you shouldn't consider this message? وَيَذْهَبَ بِطَرِيقَتِكُمْ الْمُثْلَى Amazing words in the Qur'an. If you listen to these guys, they will get rid of. ذَهَبَ in Arabic, to go. But when it comes with the preposition of ba, it means to remove. They will remove. They will erase. What will they erase? طَرِيقَتِكُمْ Your lifestyle. You know, tariq in Arabic is a path. But tariqa, the, the feminine form, is a path that you live life in. Lifestyle, it's the figurative form. Tariqatikum al-muthla, your exemplary lifestyle. I want to explain the word muthla to you so you appreciate what is being said here. The word muthla is the feminine form of amthal. Amthal is the best possible example you can give. What they are saying is, our lifestyle is so awesome, Everybody else, when they talk about the best possible kind of life, they give our example. And these two prophets, these messengers of yours, they're gonna get rid of your perfect lifestyle that everybody else loves. The whole world wants to be like us, and these people want to get rid of it. وَيَذْهَبَ بِطَرِيقَتِكُمُ الْمُثْلَى Does that sound familiar at all? SubhanAllah. There's nothing new. That's the first point I wanted to make, that this... This, this propaganda war is not new. And Allah did not leave us without guidance. He did not leave us without instruction, without His wisdom in how to deal with this propaganda and how to take the path of Musa alayhi salam as our messenger himself did sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's the first thing I wanted to share with you. Quickly, the second thing that I wanted to share with you is what do you do? On the one hand, you have a multi-billion dollar propaganda machine which does something in a very synchronized fashion. If you notice some of the buzzwords that are used, they're used across channels and across media outlets and across newspapers that even belong to, and John Stewart does a good job of making fun of that, right? But there's something peculiar about that, that all these different media outlets, apparently independent of each other, are saying the exact same thing. I want to share with you a little bit of the next ayah. قَالَ أَجْمِعُوا كَيْدَكُمْ Firaun says to his ministers, he says, unify your plot. أَجْمِعُوا كَيْدَكُمْ Unify your plot, be synced. Be synchronized in your plot, in your planning. And then he says, ثُمَّ أَتُوا صَفًّا Then come at them in rows upon rows. Come, at the end, come against Musa alayhi salam in rows. Be unified in your attack. ثُمَّ أَتُوا صَفًّا وَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْيَوْمَ مَنْ اسْتَعْلَى And know for sure the only one who will succeed today is the one who is able to show his superiority. In other words, your job is not to prove how, how great you are, your job is to prove how terrible they are. That's all you have to worry about. You just have to demonize them. You don't even have to show people how good you are. I was just, interestingly enough, what an interesting weekend I had. I was just in Atlanta. And there's an eradicating Islamophobia conference going on there. And you guys are hanging out, inshallah, tomorrow with Imam Zayd, correct? I was just hanging out with him today and yesterday. And one of the most brilliant things he said, he said all this attention on the Muslim boogeyman who's apparently also your dentist. <laughs> also the guy that, you know, works at the gas station next door or whatever. But he's like this terribly scary entity. Why all this attention on him? Because you have to take attention from other things. Jobs are shipping overseas. You know, and the, there's enough money in government to put, you know, scanners that apparently aren't even impressive to the Israeli airports. We have money for that because there are some special interest groups that are, that are making clear bucks out. And it's not even like hidden news. This is like national news at this point that there are, you know, private interests involved and their hand is deeply tied. You know, look, attention has to be taken away from that. So somebody has to be a scapegoat. We're the easy target. We really are. But this is the external. Now I'm going to quickly talk about the internal challenge. 
And I, you know, I, I had a lot of things to share with you guys, but I know I missed my flight and all that stuff. So I'm going to give you the 10 minute version of the four hour thing I was going to do. So see, I'm going to pick and choose, obviously. But the thing I want to talk about the most, especially because this is an MSA crowd, you guys are young, you have your lives ahead of you, you have also your understandings of Islam to mature and ferment. You know, you're in the process of developing your understanding yourselves, and you're being exposed to many different speakers, writers, books, you know, blogs, YouTube videos, whatever you, 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 know, whatever you may have. Uh, so you're, you're still developing your thoughts and understandings. And in this time, it is very important that I mention that you need to become savvy. And you need, you, need, you need not be naive. You need to have an open mind. And you need to understand when a game is being played with you. Because it is. I see too many youth today that games are being played with and they don't even know it. What I'm talking about is the exact propaganda that is, Islam is being painted with by certain fringe media outlets. That exact narrative is being duplicated by certain Muslims that are calling for their definition of jihad fi sabilillah. And they're writing blogs and articles and papers, and there are ayat and a hadith quoted one after another, a string of ayat and a hadith, and at the end of which, a call is being made to impressionable, stupid, teenage Muslim kids. And many of you are victim to it. Many of you are victim to it. And if you're not going to do something by actions, in your thoughts, you've already been sold. Watch out for this, this new propaganda. Because what this is, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down very basi as, as basically as I can for you. You know, in genuine studies, whether it's Islamic studies or any other studies, in genuine studies, you never make your conclusion first. What do you do first in genuine studies? You do research. You study. You study the evidences. You study, you, you, you embark upon a quest of finding all the facts you can, and eventually you make your conclusion. Your conclusion never comes first. Is it possible, however, let's just talk about the Qur'an, is it possible that I make a conclusion? I make a conclusion. I want to justify the killing of innocents. I, want to I already have that conclusion. Is it possible I can take a string of ayat, a string of a hadith, put them all together, and make it sound like by the time you're done reading all of this, my conclusion makes perfect sense? Is that possible? It is, and it's happening. This is a disingenuous approach to Islamic studies. But someone who doesn't know any Arabic, hasn't ever sat with a alim, doesn't know the first thing about usul al-fiqh, or the derivation of principles, doesn't understand the intricacy involved in deriving sharia principles, knows, knows, knows none of those things, just knows that this guy quoted a lot of dalil, man. He quoted a lot of ayat, and at the end of it he said, this is what we gotta do. So, obviously he knows what he's talking about. If that's the simplistic view of Islam you take, then you are heading down a dangerous path. And so the bit of advice, I know this is going to be a long discussion, but the bit of advice I have for all of you is that you have to make a distinction between those who are seeking knowledge still and those who are knowledgeable more than you, relatively speaking, and those who are scholars. I'm not a scholar.